Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh, and as you can see, we're heading into a construction zone. What's going on? Well, they're doing some maintenance on the Clemente Bridge, and to find out more about it, we're, we've got Mike Berdelski here, who's the, gosh, I don't want to mess this up, Assistant Deputy Director with the County of Allegheny uh, Public Works. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, I haven't messed up yet. So this bridge is almost 100 years old. Uh, yeah, it was constructed in the late 1920s to replace a previous bridge that was in place. When a bridge is this old, like, how do you make sure it, you know, is still going to operate normally and carry all the traffic it's supposed to carry? Well, we start with a inspection every two years to evaluate the structure, its condition, um, you know, any deficiencies or deterioration that's happening. The last time this was rehabbed was 1995, and we've done various smaller repairs throughout the years um, to take care of different priorities, but this is really, you know, every 25, 30 years, you need a big job like this on a bridge this old. A lot of structural steel repairs, we're gonna replace the concrete deck, sandblasting and painting the entire superstructure to help preserve the steel, prevent future corrosion, get a lot of the rust off that has occurred in the last, uh, you know, couple decades since we rehabbed it last. And uh, we're, you know, getting underway. We're a couple months into construction now, and uh, it's going to be going on through the end of 2023. Wow. And so what are we looking at right now? It's just like a ton of different various equipment. We have a lot of the equipment for the painters to do the sandblasting and painting. Um, that's what all the tarps and cables you see are for. When this bridge was built, they still used lead in paint. So you're particleizing all that lead. You need to encapsulate it, capture it, and dispose of it properly. You don't want it dropping down into the river or going into the air or anything. In a little bit, I'll be able to show you sort of what that looks like in the process. Well, so are you thinking about a new color? Maybe try pink or like blue this time? You're going to stick with yellow? Uh, Aztec Gold is the official color. You can see it on the uh, Andy Warhol and Rachel Carson bridges that we've done over the last couple years. And, um, you know, we're sticking with the same color for all three. Good. Classic. Classic choice. Okay, so what are we looking at over here? So this is one of the areas where we've been seeing the most deterioration. A lot of water gets down in these, corrodes it, and you can see, you know, a lot of rust. The paint's been failing. So we're getting inside these, sandblasting, identifying any steel repairs or rivet replacements that we need to do, um, getting it all cleaned out, priming it, painting it, and we're actually putting uh, new curb plates on that will be um, slight modification in design where they're a little bit better sloped and watertight to help prevent this from happening in the future. I only caught some of that because it's so loud, but hopefully you at home can hear that. Andy's nodding her head. Oh my gosh, these rivets are so massive. So these are rivets they're replacing from the bridge? At the time the bridge was built, rivets were, you know, the standard uh, mechanical connector for steel plates. We now use high strength bolts because you get better quality control. So as they rust, we replace them with those high strength bolts and we're using button head bolts that sort of try to match the appearance of a rivet to help keep some of the aesthetic for the historical nature of the bridge. This part where it's all the the walls of the bridges are draped with fabric it looks like a Christo art installation. Yeah I mean it's actually kind of is art I guess because that's all the painting is happening behind there. Oh my gosh we get to go through here whoa oh my gosh this is so cool i love it it feels like i'm like camping with a bridge or something a lot of what you can see here they've done a lot of uh the blasting and painting on the eye bar chains and the uh, hangers coming down to the main stiffening girder you can see you know the nice new yellow paint um and then this is the primer for the bridge um the sandblasting has been done They've, you know, identified steel repairs that are needed. They're going to, you know, clean everything up. So underneath all the Aztec gold paint is this sort of greenish primer? Yeah, it's just like painting your house. Uh, you know, you want to put, you know, a good primer down before your paint, you know, get a couple layers. Um, it really just 
helps with the longevity of the paint system to protect the steel, keep it from rusting, and that's how you can, you know, hopefully make sure the bridge lasts another hundred years. As you can imagine, just painting a room in your house takes a couple gallons, so it's a lot bigger area. <laughs> What are your feelings on putting locks on bridges? With their boyfriend, their girlfriend, they take a lock, they put them on a bridge. What do you think about that? I think it's great. I mean, you know, it's just a fun thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we are actually removing the locks as part of uh, this project, and they're going to a local artist. There's approximately 11,000 of them. Um, they've started removing them, but they're not all off yet. They're going to be made into a public art piece. Oh, that's awesome. When you heard about the Fern Hollow Bridge Collapse, as someone who works intimately with bridges, like, what were you thinking? Um, when I first heard about it, I mean, it's a, obviously a pretty scary situation. It's something you never want to have happen, you know, when you work with bridges all the time. But, um, you know, I really don't know too much about that um, collapse myself. Being with the county, that was uh, not a bridge that we own and maintain. So I really only know what's been in the news myself. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like you'd go to work the next week with like a new, like, okay, we have, this job is important, you well, know. And you got to make sure that you stay on top of everything, that you're doing your job well and doing it right. And our inspection program, taking care of repairs to these major rehabilitation projects that, you know, it all goes to it for, you know, the 533 bridges that we own and maintain for Allegheny County, so. Yeah. And so these three bridges, the, the three sisters, some people call them, like they look similar, but are they identical? Are there any differences between the bridges? The differences are so minor that you could definitely call them identical. They use the same main structure design, substructure design. Um, you know, they were all built at the same time period. There are actually three of the only five self-anchored suspension bridges uh, still in use in the United States. So um, it's really pretty interesting that there's not many of them in the world, and there's three of them right here, all right next to each other. And as far as I'm aware, it's the only place in the world where there's three bridges with an identical design all right next to each other. Wow. And like if you keep maintaining it every, you know, 20 ish years, whatever, you do sort of this overhaul where you freshen it up. Like, could these bridges last another hundred years? Could they last indefinitely? Yeah, I mean, our goal behind these large rehab projects that, you know, cost tens of millions of dollars is to really preserve them, keep them in place, and you know, hopefully they do last another hundred years. What's wild, you're just sort of this caretaker. You're like, you haven't seen the beginning of this bridge's life and you won't see the end and you're just sort of taking care of it somewhere in the middle. We have structures that were built in the 1800s, early 1900s, and, you know, structures we've replaced and they're brand new, you know, less than a year old. So they're going to be there for, you know, a hundred years and we'll be all gone and there will be someone else taking care of them. That's very cool sort of beautiful. And I heard you might let us go sort of see underneath the bridge also. Yeah, um, we're going to try and go down onto the under deck. It's a uh, sort of a scaffold system underneath to access the full length of the bridge. Sort of feels like we're walking the plank here. Yeah, we're standing on top of the uh, first pier, um, you know, right next to the 10th Street bypass with the river on the other side. And um, you know, there's multiple piers going across the length of the bridge, and they're really the foundation for what the steel structure sits on. And so have you built up like an area where to do construction? Like is all this stuff normally here, or this is something you put in for workers? Uh, yeah, this uh, under deck is a suspended scaffold system. It's called a safe span and it's, it helps with some of the containment when they're blasting and painting. Gives them access to do the steel repairs from and uh, it will be removed at the end. It was only installed for you know this project. Oh my gosh, we can go on here? Oh, this is exciting. Oh my gosh. It's pretty, it's more flexible than I expected. It sort of feels like you're on one of those like playground like suspension bridges. Yeah, um, I think Annie's freaking out also. 
It is, uh, it is suspended by um, steel cables, so it is flexible, um, but you know, it's safe. Uh, we use it on pretty much every major bridge rehabilitation project. So we're on a suspension bridge, suspended from a suspension bridge right now. Yeah, I never thought of it that way, but <laughs> that is uh, what we're doing right now. We're actually underneath uh, the downstream sidewalk that is sort of, will, would lead you to the PNC Park side of the bridge. Um, you know, this is, you know, what it looks like. These are electrical conduits for uh, the bridge lighting. So, I mean, that's something I think people might not really be aware of is, you know, to get electricity from one side of the river to the other, a lot of times there are utility lines suspended underneath the bridges as well. Okay, lastly, do you have a favorite part of this bridge? I just think the bridge being a self-anchored suspension bridge is really interesting because there aren't many of them just because of difficulty in construction but really these three bridges being identical having a very unique structure type and just getting to work on them when not many uh, bridge engineers will ever really get a chance to because there just aren't many of them and it kind of gives you a unique opportunity to be involved in a project that most people will never get to be in their careers. Well, that's awesome. Well, Mike, thank you so much. Thanks for keeping our bridges safe. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Oh, thank you. And we'll see you next time.